Hey guys, Trammy John coming after the Diablo 4 video. Uh, this one you can see I have Diablo 3 pulled up. We're going to talk very shortly about it, but we're going to talk about the exciting stuff that is Diablo 4, what's coming, what to expect, and what do we kind of know as of right now. Alright, so some of you may be wondering why would I have Diablo 3 pulled up when we're going to kind of talk about some Diablo 4. Well, the main reason why we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk this about this and break this down a little bit more is the simple fact that Diablo 4 is going to be closer to Diablo 3 in its essence when the game gets released. Now, there is the new method or, or mode, so to speak. Uh, and you know what, let's we'll call it a feature that got added with Season 28 of Diablo 3, and that's going to be this Altar of Rights. Now, this has definitely changed the aspect of the game. Um, I've only played, I've only had a time to play maybe four or five um, days worth of Diablo 3, and I can only play about an hour and a half to two hours a day, if that. So I'm not that far down the, the rabbit hole quite yet. I'm only, what, Paragon 525, uh, and I had a lot of help to get there. I still have to get all my gear for my set for my Demon Hunter here to go out and farm. However... These new Altar of Rights are very interesting and add a very interesting dynamic to the game. And I can't help but wonder if they're not testing these for the Diablo 4 uh, expansion into the franchise, right? Uh, we do know a lot already about Diablo 4 and we know a lot of the mechanics and even the skilling system, so to speak, is going to be slightly different than what we have come to expect and uh, really gotten used to with Diablo 3. Uh, that can be something that's very, very good, or that could be something that's kind of um, adds a letter, layer of complexity, we'll say. Uh, but clearly what you can see here from this image, especially if I take my head away here, um, it's not too convoluted. It's definitely no Path of Exile skill tree, which let's be honest, uh, Path of Exile player myself, the game can get a little lost just in the tree itself, right? Uh, so it does seem like Diablo 3 is kind of easing into a system like that without getting as complex or in-depth which could definitely help a lot of the player base because these games are really meant to just go hard and grind and have fun. All right, so as we have some Diablo B-roll playing in the background to kind of get you in the mood and the feel of Diablo 4, uh, there's a few things other than the normal that I kind of want to bring up and talk about with the Diablo 4. Uh, we did just briefly discuss, you know, the, the, the new right system that came to D3 and how that could possibly be implemented into D4. Uh, we've seen some of the Paragon tree and the uh, skill tree that kind of went along with this new launch. It does look very interesting, very, um, I wouldn't say, say cumbersome, but very involved as far as what is to be offered uh, as far as skills and combinations in Diablo 4. I definitely cannot wait for the beta to come so that way I can really dive into it, map them out, kind of get a good feel, good vibe for, okay, what's going to be the damage nodes? We're going to be the support nodes. What are going to be the nodes that everyone really needs to hit? And I think that's going to be something that's going to be crucial to really kind of address right at the beginning of the beta. Um, we also have been informed, okay, so they kind of talked about armor in this last update with Diablo 4 uh, with with the, uh, what, what was it, the, uh, the live stream with the developers. And um, it was kind of, in my opinion, a little lackluster because essentially what they really pointed out was kind of Captain Obvious information, right? They pop, they, they basically were like, hey, well, chest and pants are going to provide more armor, boots and gloves are going to pro provide less armor, kind of common sense, right? Stuff you wear on your hands, on your feet, are probably going to be less robust than things that you wear on your chest and on your legs. Uh, it's kind of common sense, so I was a little upset uh, a tad bit when they kind of went more into detail on it, and it was basically essentially like, hey, whatever your physical mitigation is going to be, you're going to half that mitigation as elemental because we couldn't put elemental like suspexes in the gear is kind of what I, I understood. Um, honestly, I would have loved to have seen them kind of go the direction of elemental resistance, kind of managing that a little bit better and forcing players to kind of have like a threshold to hit. Um, but at the end of the day, it was still something that was very powerful to kind of know about. And also, um, they set some hard and fast rules for us as well. We know we can get basically um, uh, up to 85% damage mitigation. Um, and that's the highest you're possibly going to hit in Diablo 4. Basically, they set, they set the bar. And that, that graphs they had kind of enlighten you guys a little bit more as far as the actual breakdown. We will do a full dedicated breakdown on the site um, after shockunited.gg. Uh, if you have not already checked it out, go click the link. Uh, there'll be a subscription down below. Click the link. Go ahead. Check out our Diablo 4 content. 
Leave comments on any of the videos that are attached. Kind of let us know what you think, how you feel. Uh, we're gonna have an interactive chat pretty soon on that website, as well as join the Discord, uh, AfterShockUnited.gg um, for the Discord link as well. Definitely go check it out. Um, join us. We're gonna be having a massive guild and getting ready for Diablo 4. Um, on top of getting ready for Diablo 4, we're also gonna be talking about everything that's gonna be happening with, right? There's a lot of us that are gonna be covering it, um, especially like, um, I know some interesting things a lot of people have been kind of talking about and bringing up is, is hardcore in D4 versus core, is it worth it? Um, if you are a core player in D3, should you be playing hardcore D4? Um, so on and so forth. At what point do you transition from, from hardcore to core? Um, it's it, all those types of things. Those are the normal day-to-day -day questions really that you can really associate with Diablo 3, but Diablo 4 is gonna be very interesting uh, because the way the damage mechanics are sp supposed to work and the way they're intentioning some of the mechanics, it does seem like the numbers won't be nearly as high as what they were on Diablo 3. Uh, it's kind of the takeaway that I got from a couple watching a couple of the developer meetings is uh, it seems like they're going to try to keep things a little bit lower, a little bit more manageable as far as balancing wise. Uh, because as soon as you get to those high, high numbers, it's really hard to kind of micro balance, micro tweak things without really making something necessarily more OP than another thing, right? Um, so I definitely am very interested to see what they do with that. Um, and that's why we kind of talk about, okay, hardcore and core, because we also have currently in Diablo 3, where you have that, uh, we'll call it get out of jail free skill, uh, where that'll proc, for example, and uh, then you won't necessarily die, right? Like you'll proc it, uh, and then you get a chance to get out of portal, get out of town, let you heal up, get off the proc. It's kind of like the oh crap mechanic, right? Um, that oh crap mechanic has not been confirmed in the heart D4 yet either. I'm gonna be very interested to see what they do if they put it in there or if they don't put it in there. Myself, I would like to see it not be there and I wanna start off playing hardcore uh, just cause I think it's gonna be the most fun. It's gonna definitely be the most interesting. They also went ahead and brought up something that was really good to know, but really asks and begs a lot of questions afterwards is the simple fact that they said controller support will be a thing. It's gonna be supported. Uh, one of the developers literally said during the stream, Hey, yeah, that's how I play. That's how I play D4. I just use my controller, which is awesome. I mean, I don't know about any of you who are watching this video if you played Diablo Immortal, but if you did, you realized really quickly that uh, having a controller like this made playing those types of games super simple. Now, it's not something that I think everyone's going to enjoy or everyone's going to like. But one thing that I want to kind of point out that seems a little interesting to me with this, this discovery is the simple fact that if we can use controller support, that means we're going to use joysticks for movement. Why don't we have WASD control? Um, I feel like that's a little irritating myself, um, mainly because the simple fact that I use something called like the Azeron keypad. Now this thing right here will be linked down below if you'd like to check one out or go buy one. Um, definitely help us out, it'll help us out at Aftershock United if you did. Uh, but I love using this keypad because I've got it macroed out for work, I've got it macroed out for games, and it's really easy for me to go ahead and do controls. Well, it also has WASD control built into a, a joystick, just like a controller. Very nice, very helpful. Um, but I'm not gonna be able to utilize that function <clears throat> when Diablo 4 launches. So I do find that a little odd that when we're talking about D4, the simple fact that they didn't really take into consideration the WSD control that they have in Diablo Immortal and just how popular that was. Like, don't get me wrong, clicking around the screen, that can be great. It can be a lot of fun, but how nice would it be if you could just use a thumbnail or your thumb or on a controller and do all that yourself, right? Obviously, if you're using a controller, you can, but for those of us who are trying to use other keypads or special keypads, they're gonna be kind of, unfortunately, shit out of luck. Now, I do also wanna point out that they did mention that the D4 seasons are supposed to be more uh, diverse and meatier than D3 seasons, is basically how they put it. Uh, so I'm very interested to see what that also means, because what that tells me is they don't want any season in Diablo 4 to be uh, necessarily boring or the same, right? They're gonna keep it moving, keep things shake, getting shaken up, uh, which means they're gonna have a, have a lot of ideas every basically three months, uh, three to four months to really approach those seasons. Uh, so that way we do always feel very immersed and a massive change has happened. Um, also, hard to limit it to four, no big deal there, uh, but does beg the, the ask the question, right? Like who's your top four? That's who you're gonna be running with. Um, we also do know that running as a group versus running solo is going to be much better, uh, up to a 10% 
XP increase uh, by running at, with a group and within a certain radius. Um, as far as I'm aware, it looks like that radius is going to be one screen length. So uh, when you look at the map, it'll be one screen length is what I, I come to kind of understand. At least talking to a few people uh, who have a little bit more information than I do. Um, I did finally get into the the, uh, the Blizzard Partner Program, which was really cool. I'm very excited about that. That's going to be basically something really cool for me to kind of uh, get to enjoy, so to speak, right at the start of day four. But uh, but yeah, that's going to kind of do it for this video. I just want to talk a little about D4, like ex expectations, um, maybe some thoughts on what to kind of expect. Uh, managing, you know, expectations really is, is a huge thing, in my opinion. And uh, I'm very interested to see what they do with a lot of this, especially with like the WA's ASD support. And on top of that, uh, what skills are we actually going to have to play with, especially when the beta comes around the corner. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'll be doing all the Diablo 4 content that I can, as well as some Diablo Immortal content as I get time. Until next time, guys, have a good rest of your day. Peace.